right, welcome you guys to Sunday morning, 9 a.m. So thankful for all of you faithful people that get to watch this service. <clears throat> Though I do hope to see some of you in church again sometime too, because you know we have um, other church times and events coming up. I think even in a couple of weeks for Memorial Day weekend, we're gonna do an after church picnic. So we're gonna have some good stuff. So we'll provide some lunch for you on the back lawn and tables and a tent and jumper for your kids, that kind of fun stuff. But anyway, okay, enough said about that. Let's go ahead and pray. And let's get started with understanding and praying that Jesus knows our emotional state and he is in tune with that. He's keen to that and he's aware of that. And, and he also knows what's coming in the future. And so he sees the world, he saw the world and he let the people know ahead of time. And he lets us know also what is to come and what to be prepared for. That we live in such a time as this <clears throat> and how can we even be prepared for it? But we will be. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I wanna thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much, Lord God, for the people that you've brought to listen to this 9 a.m. service. We ask you to bless the 10 a.m. service at First Love Calvary Chapel. We pray, Lord God, that you just bless all the ministry that um, our church does and, and my brothers and sisters who are listening, everything they do in sharing the gospel with friends and telling family members about you and doing good to people. And so, Lord God, I pray that you would help all of us, Lord, to live for you. I pray that you would help all of us, Lord, to be prepared for your coming, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that we would love your appearing. And I pray, Lord, now as we're talking about the week of the cross and yet also the end times at the same time, Lord, that you would minister to our hearts, minister to our thoughts, open us up, Lord God, to what you have to say to us for today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the scripture is from the, Luke, the book of Luke chapter 23. And it says that there was this great multitude of people that followed him. <clears throat> so you picture as Jesus heading to the cross, he's carrying um, part of the cross, um, Simon the Cyrenians carrying the other part. And it says that this multitude, multitude of people were following him. And it says, and women who also mourned and lamented. Now apparently there were in his ministry, all these women around Galilee that were following him, multitudes of women. So a lot of these women came to Jerusalem and are still following him through this hard time as he's about to go to the cross. And then it says in verse 28, it says, but Jesus turning to them said, daughters of Jerusalem. And I'm um, speaking of, you know, the, the crowds and all the people from Jerusalem, but all the people in Jerusalem. And, and just saying, basically, you're, you're God's people. Do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. In other words, you're about to go through something. It says, for indeed, the days are coming in which they will say, blessed are the barren wombs that never bore and the breasts which never nursed. So the days are coming. What if we could know those days that are coming? What if we could know what was going to be upon us? And for them, blessed are the um, breasts that never nursed and the wombs that never bore. And in that particular instance, that's usually a sad thing, but during hard times, that would have been a good thing. And it says, then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us, because there's gonna be such a hard time for them and for the whole world, not only for Jerusalem, like as we see right now, maybe, you know, nations plotting things and, and people potentially coming against um, God's nation and, and specifically Jerusalem according to prophecy apart from what anybody thinks of you know the conflict on either side we know it has much more to do than just um, the human um, drama and effect of, of sadness but it has to do with God's plan as well and so don't weep for me but weep for yourselves weep for your future weep for your children because there's days coming there's hard days there's black days there's dark days coming where even having a family isn't gonna be a happy thing. And they're gonna to begin to say to the mountains, it says in Luke 23, verse 30, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. That people are gonna be in such pain and, and hurting that their voices are gonna be screaming out and echoing in such a way that it could create an avalanche of rocks from the mountains. Just if anything can hide me from these disasters, these plagues, the, these horrible situations that are, that are coming. It says, for if they do these things in the greenwood, Jesus said to the crowds who are following him to the cross, if they do these things in the greenwood, what will be done in the dry? And so in the days when the trees are green, in the days when things seem to be normal and nice, in the days that it seems to be the good days, and if bad things happen on good days when, when things are going seemingly well, then how much worse when the trees are dry, 
when summer is nigh, when things are so um, like empty and barren. And, and when that time in your life comes, and when that time in the world comes where it's just a dryness and a sadness, how much more worse might people react than even that particular time when they were coming against Jesus and bringing him to a cross where so he's going, you know, you think this is dark and this is, this is bad. Yes, they're crucifying the son of glory. But you know what? You yourselves don't need to, you know, have your tears for me. You need to save up your tears from me because you're going to be crying for yourself because you're going to go through your own hard and dark times. So what the Lord does when he calls out daughters of Jerusalem there in verse 28 of Luke chapter 23, he is calling in the midst of the multitudes, in the midst of the peoples. Do you hear me? In the midst of my dying on the cross for you, do you hear me? And, and Jesus always cared about the multitudes. He always looked at the multitudes and saw those that were ill and dying and suffering. And it says that he had compassion on the multitudes. One time he noticed that the multitudes were hungry and he cared that they would eat. And so Jesus definitely thought about the multitudes. He cares, he says, you know, you're gonna weep for yourselves. He cares even about the tears of the multitude. And so the message and the invitation goes out to the multitudes, to anyone who will hear the message of the Lord, that would hear the word of the Lord, even during it's such a dark time in his own life, to everyone who will hear, take heed, listen, pay attention to the Lord, because he's got a message for the whole world. And specifically in this particular story, to the daughters of Jerusalem. I would imagine that even today, in some of the hardness over there in Israel, among the Palestinians and the Israelis. He's got a message to both sides of the camps there and, and both families that, you know, you're, there, there's hard times coming. They've been here and now you're gonna weep for yourselves. But what, what is that all about? Why is it that, um, you know, he's so concerned about their tears and he recognizes their tears, but he tells them that hard times are coming and that people need to recognize that because people need to trust in the Lord. Jesus was trusting in the Lord all the way to his cross. And when we've got our cross to carry, we need to trust in the Lord as well. There's a scripture in Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 29. It says, O earth, earth, earth. Like the word is going out three times to the people of the world. O earth, earth, earth. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, write this man down as childless, a man who shall not prosper in his days. Do you hear the word of the Lord that things are going to go bad? See, a lot of times we all want to hear the blessings. We want to hear, oh man, you know, I prayed and God answered my prayer. Oh, the Lord bless me. But we don't realize that this right after the blessing, a year later or whatever, the whole world is going to fall apart. And we have those times, don't we? Where our lives fall apart. But we also have those times where the whole world falls apart. Isaiah 55, 1 says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And so during those dry times, when, you know, if this happens in the green, what's it going to be like in the dry? During those dry times, we've got to come to the waters. He's calling all the peoples from the midst of the crowds. Not everybody's going to listen, but from the midst of the crowds, he's saying, come to the waters and drink and drink freely. And in Revelation 22, 17, Jesus in his word there says, um, and the spirit and the bride say, come and let him who hears come. And let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. And so we've got to hear that worldwide invitation. We've got to hear from the midst of the crowds that are following Jesus. Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, weep for yourselves. People of the world, hear the word of the Lord. People of the world, come and drink of the waters that I have to give to you. And then in Matthew 27, verse 55, it says, And many women who followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, were there looking on from afar. And it mentions some specific names of some of those women. But you gotta imagine when Jesus finally does get to the cross, he's hanging on the cross, there are crowds of onlookers. There are those that really do love Jesus. It's not like um, he's crucified and no one is there to love him. There are people who are you know, definitely taking in that moment in a way of sadness. And so, so many women followed Jesus. It's interesting that he points out in his word about all the women who followed him. Now, of course, among the crowds, some wanted him to be crucified, but also from among the crowds, there were some who just wanted to love Jesus. In Matthew 
um, chapter 15, verse 32, it says, Now Jesus called his disciples to himself and said that I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. See, Jesus sees those who are following him. He sees those who are weeping and those who are hungry, and he cares for the state of his flock. So if you're a part of his flock, believe me, sister, brother, he cares for you. And then also in John chapter 6, verses 64 and 65, it says, But there are some of you who do not believe, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Like ultimately, the Lord is in charge, knowing those who won't believe and also knowing those who have been granted to him that will believe and come to him. So among the crowds, there are always those who don't believe. And there are always those who will humbly lay it all down and say, Lord, I'm coming after you. And, and whether I'm following him to share in his sufferings and watch that cross, or whether I'm following him in his resurrection, or while I'm following him all the way to the end times and to the Enoch call of come away my people and, and you know watch from a heavenly vantage point. So he cares for our tears. He cares for our fears. He cares for our hunger, hunger. He cares for our troubles. And he cares for all of our distresses. Jesus notices. Jesus is aware. And even in the midst of his own situation, he stops. He takes note and he gives a message to the daughters of Jerusalem. And the ultimate plan of God is to love those who came out of the multitude. For God so loved the world, the multitude. In Revelation 21 verses 3 and 4, it says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So, O daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. But there's coming a time where I recognize those tears, and I will wipe them from your eyes. And there's going to be a time where there's no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, because there's going to be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And ultimately... There's the ultimate. That is God's plan. So he knows what is to come ahead for them with trials, and he knows what is to come ahead for them for glory, just as he knew it for himself. And so sometimes love does follow another, and it mourns for them. It laments for them. And when you would think that there was no love for Jesus, he's going to a cross. There, but, but there were those to love him. And he turns to that multitude who's following them and he speaks to them who love him and he has a message he has a message for their future he has a message for our future and the bible and especially in revelation right but matthew too has a message for the future of his church and so right now we might be mourning we might be lamenting we didn't know that the year 2020 was going to come upon us we didn't know what 2021 would look like and could it even be worse and, and so we don't know these things because we don't know what a day brings forth, but we know the one who is trusted and we know the one who does know. And so sometimes that one who does know says, okay, put your tears aside for me because you got to cry for yourselves because it's going to get harder and it's going to get harder for you. And we don't like to hear those kind of words, but Jesus knows and it's all, in all honesty, it's true. And so we've got to be aware of that and not just push away the negative when the negative might be being said in order to prepare us for it. So weep for yourselves and for your children because dark times are coming and, and they're gonna be sent your way. And there's gonna be a whole lot more tears than you have right now. And so you're feeling bad for me, but to this hour I've come, so you need to accept this. But there's an hour coming for you, which you might not be ready for unless you really pay attention to what I'm saying. And, and the Bible talks about trials and fiery trials that are about to try us to not be surprised by them. It says in 1 Peter 4:12, it says, "Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you." Don't think it's strange means don't be surprised by it and think like, "Where did this come from?" No, I, I told you ahead of time, beforehand that it was going to come. And so there's a lot that you'll go through. You will be having the three T's in your life. Those three T's are to be tempted, to be tested, and to be tried. 
Well, may the Lord bless you guys as you go through these tough times in your life, like the sisters of Jerusalem, the, the daughters of Jerusalem did, where they were tested and they were tried and they were tempted. And, and it says that Jerusalem would be encompassed about with armies, that the armies would surround Jerusalem. He knew that babies would be ripped from their mother's wombs. So talk about tough times. I mean, it's tougher sometimes than what we could even imagine. But in all of that, he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. In all of that, he is always there for us. And so maybe you found yourself weeping right now. Maybe you found yourself troubled right now. And maybe you found yourself looking at the world and looking at the crazy times in which we're living in. And you say, the world's gone mad. The world's gone wild. Look at the governments of the world. Look at the people of the world. Look at the religion of the world. Look at the politics of the world. I mean, is there any stability? Is there any true conservative seriousness? Is there anybody who can, you know, get their footing again? And yet the Bible is so clear that Jesus gave a prophecy that there will be a time where the world will have perplexity and the nations will be in perplexity and they won't know the answers for themselves. But you and I, dear brother and sister, we know the answers. We know those answers for ourselves because those answers are written in the word of God. And his word is always going to be found true, though every man would be found a liar. We're gonna find that all of those prophecies predating now um, are going to be fulfilled and are gonna be a time where Queen Esther her uncle Mordecai says, you know, if, if you fail to act right now, you know, believe me, they're still going to come to the palace where you live and still find you as a Jew. But how do you not know, Esther, that God has brought you to such a time as this? And so you and I, we get kind of caught up in our own quagmire of life, our own sufferings and worryings and situations. And um, even myself, you know, as those of you that know me, and I've kind of, you know, got sucked in to, um, you know, some of the, the, the sorrow and what that will bring. But I will tell you that um, God said there would be such a time as this. And, and how do you not know at this time in the year 2021 in the history of mankind that God knew that you would be born and be alive and be mature enough to lead others through it? to understand it, to point others to the cross and to the savior of that cross. And so, yes, such a time as this is here and it's before us. And it's a time to look up because our redemption draweth nigh. It is a time to maybe, um, you know, not cry for all of the things of the past and the things that you've lost and the things that you lack. And, and maybe there will be some tears in the future. Like Jesus said, cry for yourselves and for your sons and your daughters. I've known people who have said, I don't even want to bring children into this time because, you know, it's, it's so bad. But I will say that even as a Christian, um, to be childless can affect your future in a negative way and in an impoverished way. And so it is better not knowing that, you know, your, your job and your finances will save you and always be there for you, but you'll always have a family there for you. So it's good to have sons and daughters, even though the Bible in Luke 23 um, kind of seem to exalt the moment of blessed are those that are childless and those, you know, because they're going to be able to um, run away and, and not have all the weight of family hanging on to them. But the, the fact that you're going into your future and you're going to need to know how to not only tell others and run with others through it, but to minister your family and lift them through it and to not hold back and say, well, I'm not going to have a child because you know what? You can still trust God in how to raise that child in a very negative universe, in a very fallen world, in a very anti-Christ society. And when I say that, I mean how people are anti-Christ. And so um, may you find strength. May you find the mercies of God. May you lift up your head that droops down like the daughters of Jerusalem because you're weeping for yourself and for your children. And may you look up with anticipation because he is coming from the, the clouds of heaven and in the clouds of glory 
and he is coming to once again set his feet upon the earth there in Jerusalem. And so that same Jesus that left will come back in like manner as they saw him go. And that same Jesus will reveal his nail-pierced hands. And so all of us now, now is the time. Now is the appointed time. Now we need to worship the Lord. Now we need to turn from wicked ways. Now we need to put our eyes upon the author and the finisher of our faith. Because now we might be weeping. Now there might be more tears into our future. But if we've got the one in our heart who wipes away the tears from our eyes, then we have everything we need. Because Psalm 56 says that he stores our tears up in his bottle. Meaning that he doesn't forget one tear that we shed. He's fully aware, fully compassionate. And so he has pulled you and I from the multitudes. He's taken us and set us apart for salvation. He's looked at us and he's seen the world and the fallenness of the world and the brokenness of the world. And he's seen it all. And he's going, this one right here I will touch. This one right here I will have my hand on. This one right here will know my love. This one right here will see in all of their sorrow and their weeping that I am their answer, that I am their hope, that I am their reward. And they will find that all they need to do is keep looking to me, never stop looking to me, keep hoping in me, and know that their expectation will not be deferred, but it will be met. And they, in the midst of their tears, will have joy again. They will have rejoicing again. And they will find that they might have wept for a night, but God brought the joy to the daughters of Jerusalem and to the joy to you in the morning. Oh yes, we need to pray for that peace of Jerusalem. Oh yes, we need to look when armies encompass and all of that. This might not be that particular biblical story right now in the year 2021 when we look over there at Israel and oftentimes we always look and, and kind of hope, is this one of the biblical scenarios unfolding? And, and praise God, if um, everything works toward it getting closer to the coming of Christ. But then again, it may not be, and it, it also may be, because the way domino effects work is that one thing can affect another to the point where all of a sudden we're just in it. But I know that um, we can look toward the Lord Jesus who will rescue us from the wrath to come, as it says in the book of Thessalonians. And because we have not been appointed to God's wrath, but to obtain salvation, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's wake up us who sleep, because sometimes we do fall asleep as believers, don't we? And let's arise from the dead, because Christ will give us his light in our soul, in our heart, in our minds, that we can read his word and understand it, that we can know the truth and be set free, that we can follow the Son of God and have his light shining in our heart that shines ever brighter even to the perfect day, to that noonday of awakening and life and awareness of who God is and being able to find that balance because of that and give him out to others, but being ready for our own eternity. So we go from tears to heaven. We go from persecutions to heaven. As the souls under the altar in the book of Revelation are crying out and saying, how long, O Lord, until you, you know, defend our, our blood that was shed on the earth and, you know, vindicate us. And, but the Lord says a little time and it's going to happen. And we know in the Re Revelation, it was actually pretty quick at that point. And, and so what God's going to do, he's going to do a work on the earth. He's going to do a work in you and in me. And so we, may we not get our eyes off of the one who is working secretly, secretly in the heart that he has knit together. Um, because the world is definitely vying for our attention and other things are trying to pull any one of us away. And so we have to remain in our first faith, with our first love, with our, our Jesus and the real Jesus. Will the real Jesus please stand up? The real Jesus who saved us. And so also, may we stand by the daughters of Jerusalem and stand by all of those who are um, chosen of God as we are about to embark maybe on somewhat of an end times journey before the end times even happens. Um, even though we're in the end times, as the Bible says. So, you know, it's all just kind of interesting. We'll find it out all, how it all, you know, worked out once we get to heaven. We'll go, okay, I get it now. Um, but in the meantime, you know, don't weep for me. 
Luke 23, weep for yourselves and for your children, daughters of Jerusalem. And, and, and talking about the children part of things. You know, at our church, it seems like the children are finally coming back. I'm noticing on Wednesday nights, noticing on Sunday mornings, there's becoming a lot more children again. And the enemy had diminished our children. And, and now, you know, but, but those children need to know about Jesus. And when those children themselves cry because of some of the times that are going to happen, maybe their mother or father will be lost to um, some sort of a, a, a weapon. And, and in, in that particular case, as, as believers begin to fall and even little kids, hey, where's my, my, my parent? As long as they know about Jesus, they're going to know who to cry out to and they're going to know who to turn their tears toward. And so let's make sure we tell the little children to come unto Jesus for sure. Got that? All right, you guys. Well, I know it's kind of a short one here, but what happened was my um, computer went dead while I was talking to you and so lost all of my notes. So I had to just kind of share um, from the heart. But um, 10 o'clock will have the full message and also the heart as well. Um, and we have a 5 o'clock service too at First Love Calvary Chapel on the corner of Hadley and Milton. Um, so remember, at the beginning of the message, I said Memorial Day weekend, we're going to try. Um, you'll know for sure by next week, but we're going to have a picnic on the back lawn after church. We're going to provide um, lunch for everybody in a tent and a, um, you know, fun and moon bounce for the kids, that kind of stuff. So that will be Memorial um, weekend. And so let's go ahead and pray and let's pray for salvation. Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus right now that you'd bring salvation to every home who's watching. Lord, I pray that um, you would help those that are backslidden and those who are lost to come to you, even through this prayer that I'm going to pray with them right now. And so everybody just pray out loud, whether you're a believer or not. And let's just say, Dear Lord Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Dear Lord Jesus, be my rescuer. Dear Lord Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. You rose again from the dead. And Lord, I have blown it. I have sinned. I have sinned against you. I have broken the commandments of God. I have lived according to this sinful world and according to the prince and power of the air. And now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Lord Jesus, I rededicate my life to you. Lord Jesus, I want salvation. Lord Jesus, I don't want to miss your rapture if, if it could be missed. And Lord, I want to be the one who said yes to you. I want to be the one that has your blood upon me. And so, Lord Jesus, please save my soul. Or, Lord Jesus, please, I rededicate my life to you. In Jesus' most holy and precious name, I pray. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. And have a wonderful, wonderful day in Jesus. Okay? God bless you.